drink it, please. No, I Thank you. I mean, everything is going really well for me. I just finished a video game and... You know, like, Jackass 2.5 is great. And now, you know, I mean, I've got my own television series, Dr. Steve-O's, uh, head. Yeah. It's like, my rap album's no different. I mean, it's really phenomenal stuff I'm doing, you know, and, like, that's all you have to do is just hear it, and then you'll be amazed. I'm Steve-O and I'm an alcoholic drug addict and simply put, I completely lost control of my life. If I think you out before... Drugs and alcohol turned me into an absolute douchebag, a complete monster, and I had cameras rolling just about the whole time, all the way to rock bottom. So here it is, an incredibly difficult process of showing the world how bad my drug and alcohol addiction got. Oh. <laughs> Even he feels bad for me. <laughs> we've got of Steve. Oh, that was the um, tooth that you lost entirely too soon. This is my first try at walking. You slipped on a stair and smacked your tooth. Um, <laughs> you the boozer at age two. <laughs> sticking breadsticks up your nose and grabbing somebody's beverage. Just slugging down the booze. I grew up with alcoholism in my family. And I guess I was 12 years old, the first time I really vomited from drinking too much alcohol, which I stole from my parents. Steve got into uh, the family uh, wine and liquor cabinet, and I wrote it off to an isolated experience. I mean, who doesn't experiment with their parents' liquor cabinet? You see the facts long before you accept the reality. And uh, I guess many parents have developed the art of self-deception. I got my first skateboard in 1985 when I was 11 years old. And when I was 15 years old, my dad won a video camera in a golf tournament. And ever since then, my entire life has been pretty well documented on video, oh for better or worse. I am completely crazy. You know it, baby. The first time I smoked pot, I was 16 years old. And from that point on, I smoked pretty much every day. And by the time I was 17 years old, I was taking acid on the way to high school in the morning. I remember like being very young and everything I looked up to was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. My life really turned into a pursuit of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. When I got to college, I just felt like, man, I'm not cut out for this, you know? Like, I can't do it. I couldn't bring myself to go to class. I couldn't bring myself to study. For me, it was like fail out or drop out. And those were my options. And I just thought, man, what am I going to do with my life? Steve doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> the only thing I was really familiar with and did well was videotape stupid stunts. I thought, OK, this is it. I'm going to be the craziest guy in the world. It's going to be great. I'm going to be a stunt man. I'll never forget when Steve told us that he wanted to be a stunt man. Why in the world would anybody want to do that? 
I wanted the shortest distance between me and the sex, drugs, and rock and roll lifestyle. Like, it was either going to become successful at what I was doing as a video camera, or I was going to die trying to make it successful. He was either going to end up incarcerated, dead, or famous, and we really didn't know what. When I was 20 years old, I had this run of really bad luck, which is how I would describe it. You know, I kept getting hospitalized when I was drunk. There was an incident where I threw myself off this balcony and landed on my face on the concrete, breaking my cheekbone. I broke seven teeth. I had 10 stitches in my chin and a broken wrist. And I still had the cast on my wrist when I got arrested for my first DUI. And I called up my mom and I said, hey, um, I'm in jail. I got arrested for DUI. So my mom said, have a good time in there because I'm not going to bail you out unless you go directly to rehab. And it was mom's call and I think it was part of the condition of getting bailed out and um, it didn't take. Anytime you go to rehab for someone else's benefit, like I was there to make my mom happy, um, it's not going to work. You know, you got to really want to get better. And uh, I didn't even feel like I had a problem to begin with. <laughs> From the point when I bailed out of University of Miami, I was homeless for three years and in high gear filming stunts with my video camera. And over the course of those three years, it became clear that I wasn't really getting anywhere towards being a coming a stuntman. So I found out about Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Clown College, that it was free to get into, it had no tuition. Clown College was statistically harder to get into than Harvard. Over 2,000 people applied and only 30 got in. And I thought, if I can just get the name Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey associated with me in any way, then all of this stupid crap I've been doing with a video camera will somehow become legitimate. They didn't pick me for the circus after I graduated from Clown College, and I was kind of bummed about that. But uh, it made sense, you know? Like, I wanted to be a stuntman, and they were looking for clowns. But ultimately, I got a job in this flea market circus. The flea market circus that I worked in would do two shows on Friday, three shows on Saturday, and three shows on Sunday. And typically I would do cocaine through all without sleeping on it. I was a cocaine addicted clown in a flea market circus. My last time performing professionally as a circus clown was the day that I puked up the goldfish for MTV. Swallow this goldfish and puke him into the bowl. I first met Steve-O when I was making Big Brother Skateboarding Magazine. And he would just send me photos and footage all the time of him just doing just the most outrageous stunts. So when we started Jackass, Steve-O was one of the first people I called. I just knew he would be perfect for the show. As soon as my goldfish trick played on MTV once, I became recognizable the next day. Two minutes of FaceTime, which changed my life forever. <laughs> Once Jackass hit the air, it was instantaneous. I mean, it was just this weird instant hit. So I packed in my car and I headed off to California. <laughs> Am I comfortable with my popularity? Yeah. I don't understand. Can you handle it? I don't understand it at all. It's like, it's like, dude, aren't you the guy who stuck his face in elephant? What <laughs> <laughs> a dumb reason for people to think I'm cool. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve-O, and this is the Cricket Helmet. Certainly after I got to California, most of the filming that I did for Jackass was always with no sleep and still going from like a day or two. It would be Steve-O awake for four days straight, just going for it on anything that he could find. And then he would literally crash for like 48 hours. <laughs> it's just a banana. And then he would just wake up and go back for more. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the tequila stuntman. I knew it. Throw it down, throw it down, throw it down, throw it down. Oh! Well, I wouldn't choose his line of work for an addict. Uh, addicts tend to be highly thrill-seeking. They tend to be, you know, stuntmen and race car drivers and extreme athletes. And so there's no surprise that an addict would be attracted to the kind of work that he does. Slowly but surely, I seem to be becoming a barack.